The minor pentatonic really is one of the sexiest scales that there is. Hell, I'd tap it. Aloha, Suckamaniacs, and welcome to another installment of Weekend Wank Shop, here with your old friend, Uncle Ben. We're here today to talk about a sick E minor pentatonic lick that involves some tapping. You might hear some dudes like Guthrie Govan or Steve Vai or Andy Wood play all kinds of sexy licks based on the ideas that you're going to learn about today, young one. Now, children, I've said it a hundred times before, and I'll continue saying it. Quicker you can realize that a scale is a set of notes and not a pattern on the fretboard of your guitar, the sooner you're going to start playing some cool stuff that's going to quit making you look like such a bozo and start getting you chicks. If you never come to understand that, then your ever familiar minor pentatonic box will become a minor pentatonic coffin where you will be buried beneath the weight of your own stale and generic stepdad blues licks. But fear not, young Shred-Eye Knight, Uncle Ben's here to help. But before we begin, let's hear that lick again, this time at good old-fashioned stepdad speed. Now don't forget to go check out my Instagram page, Ben Eller Guitars, for a handwritten tab for this week's lick. Also, I definitely recommend you go to uh, my channel here and search for my This Is Why You Suck At Tapping video. If tapping is a skill that you haven't quite developed yet, I break it down, I give you the keys to the castle, and tell you everything you need to know about tapping. So that'll help you out a bunch if that's not a technique that you're totally comfy with. And be sure after you learn this lick to upload it to Instagram. Uh, make a video of you playing it, upload it to Instagram, put the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop on it. That way your good old Uncle Ben here can check out your progress and see how sick you be doing. Our good buddy, the E minor platonic scale, is made out of these notes. E, G, A, B, D, E. Now, if you're a smart guitar player, which I know that you are, then you'll understand that that means any E on the fretboard. Any G, any A, any B, any D, any E is going to be an acceptable note to play and stay inside of the scale. Obviously, I'm moving all over the fretboard right now, but I'm staying inside of the scale because I'm playing the right notes like a grown-up would. Again, the quicker you realize that, the sooner you'll start playing some cool stuff on the guitar and quit just running up and down scale patterns. Today's lick is going to involve a little bit of the good old E minor pentatonic box that we're going to extend out by playing some other notes from the scale a little bit higher up on the fretboard using some tapping, which is a somewhat pricey technique. All right, lords and lasses, Uncle Ben is packing a big-ass seven-string rig with him today, so if your guitar doesn't have as many ropes on it as mine does, I recommend going out, getting a bunch of popsicle sticks, extending your fretboard out, getting some bicycle spokes, making your fret wires bigger, getting yourself an extra string. That way you can be just like me. You can do that after this lesson though, so don't worry about doing it right now. Okay, so we're gonna be using the E, B, and G strings in this lick, and we're gonna be using a little bit of the ever familiar minor pentatonic box pattern up here. We're gonna be playing 15 and 12 on the E string, that's G and E. 15 and 12 on the B string, that's D and B. 14 and 12 on the G, that is A and G. And we're also going to be utilizing the ninth fret on the G string, which is an E note. That's the exact same thing as just walking down the minor pentatonic scale pattern. We're going to use the slide because, uh, well, frankly, it sounds a little bit cooler. Okay, so like I said, the E minor pentatonic scale is the notes E, G, A, B, D, E. It's not just this scale pattern, it's any E, any G, any A, any B, blah, 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 all over the board. So these notes that I'm tapping on, it's not just some magical, oh wow, you move up two frets and then you can tap this. No, you're just playing another note from the scale. So a note that you already played, just maybe a little bit higher in the register. Here's what's up. The notes I'm gonna be tapping on are the A note, which is fret number 17 on the high E. The E note, which is fret number 17 on the B. 
and the B note, which is fret number 16 on the G. So for the right hand here, the picking hand, we're going to be playing 17 on the E, 17B, 16G, okay? That's in conjunction with this. Okay, now how the lick is going to begin is just like this right here. I'm going to start off by playing the 15th fret on the high E string. Again, sticking inside of that minor pentatonic box. And uh, for starters, I'm going to go ahead and have my right hand kind of fixated up here on the neck of the guitar. I'm not going to really start back here. I'm going to need to be, need to be tapping here in just a second. So might as well bring my hand close to the source and uh, just go ahead and pick this first note on the neck of the guitar. Okay, So I'm going to pick the 15 and I'm going to pull it off to 12. Then I'm going to hammer it back on to 15 like that. So that was... Then what I'm going to do is add on that tapped note. Notice I'm using the middle finger of my right hand because my thumb and index are currently engaged in gripping the pick. So they're not available to tap. So I'm going to be using my middle finger to do the tapping right here. Okay, so anyway, 15, pull up to 12, back to 15, hammer on the 17. There's our first tap note. After that, just pull them off, 15, 12. Notice that that has kind of a triplet feel. Triplet, triplet. This whole lick is going to follow that kind of rhythmic idea. After that, what you're going to do is play the exact same lick, but on the B string. I'm starting off by picking the 15th fret B. Again, picking on the neck of the guitar here. 15, pulling up to 12. Back to 15. Tap 17. Pull them off. So now we got this. After that, what we're going to do is to play the G string here on fret number 14. Pull off to 12. Back to 14. Tap 16. Rip them all off. Slide down to 9. Okay, so once again, kind of slowly, that start off on 15 on the E. Pull off to 12. Hammer on 15. Tap 17. Pull off to 15, pull off to 12. Same thing on the B string. Pick 15, pull off to 12. Hammer on 15, tap 17. Pull off to 15, pull off to 12. Pick 14 on the G, pull off to 12. Hammer on 14, tap 16. Pull off 14, pull off 12. Slide down to nine. And that is basically it. Sick! Let's also get a quick overview about the two hardest aspects of this lick right here. The string transfers and the muting, okay? Let's talk about the string transfers first. I'm talking about where you're going to be going from one string to another, like the E string to the first note on the B string. Now, if you're not careful, then what's going to happen is this last note that we played on the E, which is the E note, fret 12, will bleed into the next note that we're playing, which is the 15th B. It'll sound like this if you do it wrong. You hear that really dissonant kind of squawky noise right there? It's because those notes are just a whole step apart. That's a D and an E. Not exactly the most beautiful sound you can make on a guitar. So you don't want to have any notes ringing out together as you change from string to string. What this is going to involve is a little bit more of that full empty idea. I've talked about this in a lot of my videos because it's really just that damn important. Whenever I'm making the change to a new string, what I'll want to do is not just remove my finger or to continue holding it down, which makes that note sustain out. What I want to do is, as soon as I pick that 15th fret B in this scenario, I want to just loosen this finger up. I'm going from gripping it down on 12 to not gripping it down on 12. Notice I'm not yanking my finger away. I'm not continuing to hold it down. I'm just going from having it firmly gripping the note to not gripping the note anymore. I'm still touching the string, that's so important. If you let go, it just sounds out an open string. That doesn't help you out at all. You wanna just loosen up like that. So as soon as you're picking the next note on the next string, be sure just to loosen up, okay? And then just loosen it right there. Loosen it. There you go. That's the basic idea behind the string transfers. That should help you out a little bit. All right, kids, the other really hard aspect about licks like this is the muting, okay? We're going to be doing some muting with the right hand and with the left hand here. So like we've already explored, the lick only uses the G, B, and E strings. That means I'm not using the D, the A, the E, or my low B string at all. So with the right hand over here, it is going to be basically just palm muting those strings. I've got the B string under my palm. I've got the E under my palm, the A, and the D. 
I don't have the G, B, or E under my palm because, well, I need to hear those notes, don't I? So any unused strings are going to be muted back here. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but I've got my hand basically over the neck pickup of the guitar, just touching those strings. That way they don't make any noise. Okay, so that covers everything above the strings that we're playing, but let's talk about the actual strings that we're playing. Watch as I play this lick right here. I'm kind of holding the guitar at a weird angle here, so I might play it a little funky. But watch how my index finger never arches up, okay? Uh, your guitar teacher probably told you, always arch your fingers up when you play, and he was right for the most part, but the index finger's role is so important for muting. A lot of times the index finger actually needs to be somewhat flat, that way the underside of it will mute out unused strings, okay? Again, I'll play this kind of slow here. Watch how my pointer finger never is like this. It's always kind of flat. That way it's going to dampen out all of my uh, high strings as I play through this lick. So again, you saw the underside of my finger here touching all three strings here as I went through that lick. Be sure to not arch that pointer finger up. Play on the face of the index finger. Don't play on the tip of it, play on the face of it. That way you can mute the strings that you've already played, which will bring great honor to your family. So there you go, kids. Another sick lick that's going to get you off your stepdad's shit list in no time. Good luck with this one. Don't forget to upload a video of you playing it to Instagram. Hashtag it Weekend Wank Shop. And uh, don't forget to tune in next week for some more awesome licks. And hit me up anytime for some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons. Give me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. Let's talk about setting up a day and a time where we can talk about some scales and modes and technique. All that good stuff that you need. Let's set it up. Thanks so much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe. And stay tuned for more next week. Take it easy now. Goodbye!